The most likely place to find a plane is at an airport. Some people visit airports for that very reason. The second most likely place is by looking up at the sky and waiting for one to pass overhead. You're far less likely to find one abandoned in a field or behind a building somewhere. And yet, it's been known to happen. We know some surprising stories about abandoned planes, and we're happy to share them with you. Anything associated with the legendary performer Elvis Presley is bound to fetch a high price at auction. So this Elvis memorabilia market must have been at a fever pitch in June 2018. That's when a one-of-a-kind item became available, specifically Elvis's old private jet. The king once flew in luxury inside this orange plane, but by the time it resurfaced in 2018, it was suffering from a few issues. To be more specific, the 1962 built Lockheed Jetstar 1329 was missing its engine and almost all the important equipment from inside the cockpit, and the paintwork was a real mess. The plane was eventually recovered in 2016 after spending 36 years standing on a runway in New Mexico seemingly unnoticed. 2018 wasn't the first time it's come up for auction recently though. It was first auctioned in 2017 and sold for $430,000, but the anonymous buyer apparently didn't realize how badly damaged it was and so chose to part with it almost immediately. Hopefully this time it's gone to someone who will show it a whole hunk of burning love. It would be totally wrong of us to make a video about amazing abandoned planes without mentioning the artifact known as Swamp Ghost. So let's give her the spotlight she deserves. Swamp Ghost is a Boeing B-17E flying fortress that served during the Second World War, but was shot down in the sky over Papua New Guinea in 1942. The plane's pilot demonstrated expert skill by bringing the critically damaged plane safely down to the ground in a swamp, escaping with his life intact. But such was the nature of his crash landing that he had no way of giving his commanding officers the plane's precise location when he made it back to base. It wasn't until 2006 that the plane was finally seen again from the windows of a recovery plane acting on a trip about a long-forgotten American wreck in the area. Because of its pale appearance and the fact it was mostly underwater by then, the locals had come to know it as Swamp Ghost. Swamp Ghost was eventually extracted from the swamp and brought back home to the USA in 2010, where she's now in the Pearl Harbor Pacific Aviation Museum. While most unwanted planes are scrapped, it's not always possible or even financially viable to do so. In those instances, unwanted planes are usually taken to a discreet aircraft graveyard known as a boneyard. There are boneyards hidden all over the world, including one just outside the busy metropolis of modern London in England. This plot of land has four old planes scattered across it, as if someone dropped them there and is owned by a nearby hotel. It's thought that the planes have been here longer than the hotel, though. One of them dates back to the 1950s. The hotel has never tried to have the planes removed, and nobody else is going to do anything about them because they stand on private land, so they're left to go rusty and submit to the foliage that surrounds them. One keen-eyed plane spotter believes they've identified the largest of the planes as an RAAF Hawker Siddeley HS-748, but the jury is still out on the other three. South End Airport isn't far from this location, which might offer a small clue about how the planes got here in the first place, but the airport has always denied having anything to do with the discarded planes. Elsewhere in London is an abandoned plane mystery that hides in plain sight. London Heathrow is one of the busiest airports in the world, and almost everyone who's passed through it has noticed the strange, rusty green plane-shaped object standing a short distance back from the runways. It would pass for a regular plane were it not for the fact that it has no windows of any kind. People have often wondered what it is and why it looks slightly burned. Fortunately, we're able to answer both of those questions. This is a dummy plane used by Heathrow's aircraft rescue firefighters for training. 
The reason it looks like it's been burned is that it's been set on fire many times. Internally, the plane is a mashup of several different aircraft designs, which allows trainee rescue teams to practice rescue operations on different layouts. It's never flown and never will. In fact, it's never moved an inch from its current location. But you could argue that it's still the most important plane at Heathrow despite that. We've heard several stories about people who've bought old planes and tried to turn them into hotels or restaurants. Most of the time, the projects are carried out by people who have more money than sense and end in failure. There are exceptions to that statement, though, like this incredible Costa Rican vacation home that's been crafted out of a retired Boeing 727. It's a long time since this plane has flown anywhere, but that doesn't mean it's ever returned to the ground. It's perched at the top of a 50-foot high pole. It might look a little precarious, but it's perfectly safe. Inside the iconic exterior of the aircraft, almost everything has been ripped out and replaced. Instead of rows of neatly arranged seats, you'll find two bedrooms and two bathrooms, with wooden viewing platforms and decks attached to the wings. Rather than being a standard hotel, this unique accommodation is presented as a holiday home to be hired by couples, families, or small groups of friends. It's every bit as expensive as these pictures make it look, but we're sure it would be a trip of a lifetime. In 1947, a B-29 known as Keybird landed on a frozen lake in Greenland. Almost 50 years later, a volunteer team of aircraft enthusiasts and experts attempted to fly her back off it, and they very nearly succeeded. The Superfortress plane was forced to land due to a pilot error in February 1947, the pilot made a mess of navigation and then ran out of fuel trying to correct it. The landing was safe and the crew was unharmed, but the keybird couldn't be recovered. In 1994, experienced aircraft racing pilot and scrap plane builder Daryl Greenemeyer arrived at the scene with a team of people determined to get it off the ground again. He set about replacing the propellers and engines, fitted new tires, and set about fixing the control surfaces. But the weather turned against the team, and they were out of time for the year. Daryl and friends came back in 1995 and finished the job. And so the Keybird was prepared for takeoff on May 21st that year from a specially built runway. Sadly, the jury-rigged fuel tank for the auxiliary power unit began leaking aviation fuel directly into the plane almost immediately. Daryl and his crew escaped before flames engulfed the fuselage, but the damage was done. Keybird was destroyed. What's left of the crumpled wreck is still visible on the Greenland ice cap and is sometimes photographed from above. If you want to know where to find an abandoned plane or two, the best man to speak to is probably Dietmar Eckel. The German photographer has been taking pictures of abandoned locations for almost his entire career, and planes are his specialty. In 2013, he released a collection of abandoned plane pictures called Happy End, featuring images of aircraft taken everywhere from Papua New Guinea to the Arctic Circle. Dietmar's collection is so named because he only takes photos of plane wrecks that the pilots and crew escaped from. He says he'd find taking pictures of fatal wrecks to be morbid. Many of the locations he's photographed don't even have names. He found them on Google Maps and flew drove, hitchhiked, and bartered his way to them. His iconic shots of a 1994 plane crash in the Western Sahara Desert are one such example. The somehow strange spectacle of a tiny white plane standing out like a speck on the red Australian desert is another example of his best work. Dietmar has been all over the world in pursuit of crashed planes, but can't really explain what attracted him to them in the first place. Early in the afternoon on November 21, 1973, a United States Navy transport plane crash-landed on the south coast of Iceland at Solheim Masandur Beach. Nobody really knows why it came down. The official story is that it simply ran out of fuel, but the Aviation Safety Network puts the crash down to severe icing. 
The plane came down hard and broke the ice, but miraculously it didn't sink. The crew was unharmed, other than a few bruises, and were later rescued, but the plane was written off. Since then, it's come to be known as the Black Sands Crash Site because of the dramatic scenery that surrounds it. It didn't always look quite as bedraggled as it does today. Local legends say that a farmer stole the tail section, and someone else took away the second fuel tank, leaving the shell of the Douglas R4D8 exposed to the harsh conditions for more than four decades. It's the only real landmark on this foreboding volcanic beach, and given the fact that there's nothing left of it that's worth stealing or scrapping, it probably always will be. Somewhere in Ohio, there's a strip of land full of American warplanes. Were it not for the land's former owner, all of the planes would have been scrapped shortly after the end of the Second World War. The land was bought by scrapyard worker Walter Soplata in 1947, after he noticed more and more American planes brought into his yard to be taken to pieces after being declared surplus. Walter thought this was a waste of perfectly good planes, so he bought his piece of land and started buying them from the military rather than accepting them for scrappage. The average price was around $1,000 per plane. He eventually expanded to collecting almost any type of plane. By the time Walter retired in the 1980s, he'd amassed an enormous collection, including an ultra-rare Goodyear FG1D Corsair, a Fairchild C82 boxcar, a Volte BT-15 trainer, and a B-25. Walter passed away in 2011, since which time his family has received multiple big money cash offers from museums for some of the planes in his Ohio boneyard. So far, they've turned them all down and allow access only to a few very lucky hand-picked photographers. You don't need to be into narcotics to have heard of Pablo Escobar. He's one of the most notorious criminals who ever lived, and was fabulously wealthy during his lifetime. Among the many places in the world that Escobar and his cohorts operated was Norman's K in the Bahamas, and his old plane is still there in the water. We imagine that Pablo was extremely unhappy with whoever left his Curtis C-46 commando in this state. He established a base in Norman's K during the late 1970s and regularly used this plane for import and export activities. But in 1980, a pilot making an inbound trip somehow managed to completely miss the purpose-built 3,500-foot-long runway. The plane came up short and then got stuck in a sandbank at low tide. When the tide came in, well, you can see what happened. Either the plane couldn't be recovered or Pablo didn't think it was worth recovering. But it's now become a popular spot for scuba divers. The plane can easily be seen from the shore during good weather and hardly seems to have eroded at all in the 40 years since it went down. A Boeing 737 is a very large object. It would be difficult to forget one for that exact reason, but someone seems to have done so in Kuda Selatan, Bali. It's hard to imagine someone sneaking a plane of these proportions into a position like this without anybody noticing, but someone did. It stood in a field next to a busy limestone quarry, but nobody has the first idea how it got there. There's a highway nearby, and the busy tourist destination of Pandawa Beach is only five minutes away. Someone must have seen it land, but if they did, they're staying quiet about it. To add to the sense of mystery about the island's strange visitors, it doesn't have any livery or insignia. One theory is that it might have been in a disassembled state when it was purchased, and was then put back together at its current location but that would imply that it was built to serve a purpose of some kind. Might it have been one of the failed restaurant or hotel projects we alluded to earlier? The Royal Canadian Air Force went to great lengths to ensure that this consolidated Kanzo bomber would never be of any use to anyone after it crash-landed 
on Vancouver Island in February 1945. The plane had only just left base in Tofino, piled high with supplies, including 1,000 pounds of explosives when the port side engine failed. That was terrifying for everyone on board. The plane carried 12 people, almost 3,000 liters of aviation fuel, and four depth charges weighing over 250 pounds each. Pilot Ronnie J. Scholl tried to bring the plane back to the airfield, but that involved a 180 degree turn that skimmed the plane across treetops, creating the very real risk of crashing into a hillside. Panicking, Scholl eventually brought the plane down in the forest of Radar Hill. The crash landing caused a fire, but Scholl and his whole crew were rescued. Not long after the rescue mission, the RCAF came back to the site, stripped away all the guns and radios, and then detonated the depth charges. The scars of those detonations can still clearly be seen in the wreck itself and the landscape around it. Why they chose to further damage a plane that was already likely beyond use is unknown. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!